Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. Today is Monday, November 9th. I am Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach, and I am joined by the PGA specialist, Mr. Andrew Hansen. Andrew, the Masters is finally here. Can you believe this? It's hard to believe, but it is so exciting that we are recording it here on Monday. Normally, we for a long time, we did our PGA shows on Wednesday. Then we yeah. shifted it to Tuesday. And this week, we said, we just can't wait any longer. We've been waiting for this for months. Uh, so exciting. It's going to be a different scenario in the fall without fans. But it's those same holes we've come to know and love. And I can't wait. It is. And I'll tell you, uh, the way that they're uh, bringing it forward for people to watch this year, they're, they're trying a bunch of new things that they've never done because there's no fans. So do you know that you can actually pick a guy and – uh, watch every shot that he hits the entire weekend. So you can pick out your guys that you're playing in DFS, and they have a live tournament f- feed where you can watch those specific guys for every shot throughout the whole event. So between ESPN and, and CBS and all the coverage, I mean, it it's going to be, you know, four really fun days. And the weather's supposed to be better than normal for, you know, for November in Atlanta. It's like Dallas, you know, we're – about the same level as far as, as south. And, uh, you know, you can get some super cold days in there. So we're very lucky. It's supposed to be mid to upper 70s here and in it, and uh, Augusta this week. So uh, it should make for a fantastic tournament, no doubt about it. Yeah, it's going to be warm, but we will have some rain here leading up to Thursday. Yes. And that'll be, that'll be important to watch of just how much rain the course gets and how much longer it's playing because of it, and if the yes. forecast holds for Thursday. Uh, right now, I'm seeing 80% chance of rain on Thursday, and then it tapers off to 40, 30 to 40% thereafter. But you know, if it, it rains the next couple days and the course is playing that much longer, then I think distance is going to be very important. You know, it, that's a great point, and you know, that's what a lot of the the sharp prognosticators out there are talking about. And it also shows, even in looking at the Vegas lines uh, in the last uh, 24 hours, some of the long ball hitters like DJ, uh, their odds have taken a big dip. So I think that word has gotten around quite a bit. I did want to mention, though, because it was just so enjoyable. I I listened to uh, a really fun, like, 15, 20-minute interview with Charles Howell III, who's played, uh, this is his 12th Masters, and he just had so much great insight. It was it was fantastic. I mean, you know, you listen to everybody, you know, like us, we talk about it, we know about it, we follow it, but we're talking about a dude that's lived it. So right. to listen to him, it's so cool. But he mentioned the same thing you just alluded to, uh, that, you know, the, the, he thinks that the rain up until the event, a couple of pretty good soakings are going to go through before they tee off Thursday, what he thought is the weather would be okay for the tournament, though. But he did say with it being softer, you're not going to get those bounce and runouts. So a lot of your drives are going to be mostly carry. So it will favor the longer hitters. And he was mentioning because, uh, you know, he's not the longest hitter, especially at this point in his career. He said the fun thing about the Masters always, and you can go back and look at all the champions, is sometimes it's long hitters, sometimes it's shot makers. It just, you know, the course is the ultimate uh, equalizer for everybody, he said. You know, you can win it with those short shots and positioning, you know, like when Danny Willett won it the one year and, right. and guys like that. Or, you know, the bombers, uh, you know, like Tiger himself, you know, you get that big edge when you have those wedges into greens and and are able to take it from there. So, you know, I think we could favor maybe a a slight bit on the side of, I think driving uh, distance is going to make a difference this week because of the softer uh, greens. But, you know, he also had mentioned they have such like immaculate, incredible greens keepers and fans and all these crazy things that they do to make it like, nothing happened with the weather. I mean, like no other place, you know, that obviously the Masters is the most uh, meticulous with their, uh, 
you know, they don't. I don't think anybody plays on the course for like several months before the tournament uh, actually tees off. So uh, I think it'll be great. I think still, you know, you don't. I'm not saying by any stretch just take all the you know DeChambeaus and DJs and the bombers because there is a massive importance for accuracy on this course. You can spray it a little bit. The the rough is not that high, but uh, you can forget it as far as getting it into position on the greens to make some putts if you have to approach it from some of the, the roughs. It's just a, a whole different ball game. So, uh, you know, I think as we go through some of these stats today, you know, we talked a little bit before we came on air here is, you know, we'll, we'll go through some, some statistics with driving and such that we think will be a big, uh, you know, possible differentiator in some guys uh, that, you know, in the past, maybe it would have been a little bit more even where they it may give them an edge. And that's, let's face it, we're looking for every edge possible. And, uh, you know, then we got to finish. We, we had those edges this past week in Houston. We had all our guys making cuts. Uh, we just had a few of them uh, do a little bit of chokey choke here down the stretch in the last few holes. But that happens, too. Yeah, well, the, the GPP lineup on FanDuel, 6-for-6 six six made the cut. That's all you yep. can ask for. It cashed. It, it didn't take it anything down. But, you know, you get in that habit of getting six through to the to the weekend, you're in good shape. Oh, I know. We, well, we had five out of six, but five, like, in the top 16. At one point, we had three of the top five guys, which, when you think about it, that's almost impossible. But, you know, we had a lot of guys <laughs> hit, hit the skids on Sunday there, felt the the stress a little bit. So, you know, but again, you got to look at this when, you know, when we're making these rosters and getting them on there, you know, for me, at least, I always look at my first goal is let's get these guys through the cut. Then I'll worry about the second part of finishing. So that is the key, you know, making sure, you know, we're, we're getting some guys that, you know, have, have some experience, uh, been in some big events specifically here at the masters. And, I'll tell you that the list of new newbies is ridiculous. It's like 16 or 17 people uh, that are in this event that have never played it before, from the Schefflers to the um, Morikawas on down the list. And there's only 92 in the field with uh, the two losses of Sergio and, and Neiman uh, with uh, COVID. And so with 92 in the field and I believe 17 newbies, uh, it's going to be interesting. And another change this year, only 50 make the cut and ties. And the 10 shot rule is out the window, which always used to right. be fun because Tiger would be up there toying <laughs> up by like <laughs> five, six shots. And no, everybody's like, OK. But then everybody that was nine shots behind him was sweating bullets because it was right. like, you know, 50 guys are going to get chopped if he if birdies 18. But that's gone. So they've changed that rule. So it's going to be cut and dry, top 15 ties, and that is it. And so, you know, that makes for a little bit bit of a difference as well. Yeah, and, you know, the talk about making the cut, uh, that was really the biggest thing for my research so far is guys who have experience on this course, who have a history of making the cut first and obviously mm-hmm. high finishes, and then combining it with guys with good recent form because – you don't usually have a lot of success here as a first timer. Right. Uh, Fuzzy Zeller won as a first timer back in 1979, but lots of it times. It almost you, never happens. You, yeah. You Normally you'll see a, a progression where a guy maybe misses the cut or then he finally makes the cut and he slowly works up towards those top 10, top fives. And so I actually would like to highlight a few of those guys on that list of 17 of, of the newbies. Yes. Uh, just to get people in, in the mindset of, you know, what to do with them. Because most of them I'm not going to play, even though there are some big names on here. So There are. Um, I want to, when you go over that list, I'm going to even exclamation point that for you as well. Okay. There is, not only do they not do that well, but there's a very high percentage, and I'm talking about stud players that don't even make the cut, like you said, on that first time out. It's, right. I don't know if it's the intimidation or the aura of the Masters. I think even those guys are in awe of that event. No and doubt. so I think that is a great thing to keep in mind because there's a bunch of people you're about to read off that not only you know the DFS community, but you and I have been on a lot this year. 
And right. I'm definitely with you in taking a step back from these newbies. So let's start with a guy that we both love. That's Morikawa. Yeah. And this is his first time there. He's 9,500, so he's expensive on DraftKings. Um, he's been awesome the last 24 mo- uh, last 12 months, but not great recently. Right. So for his, he, as a first timer, he's one that I'm stepping back from. You know, there's just other guys in that price range and cheaper who have a yes. lot more experience on this course, who are in better recent form. So there's a guy that I'm probably going to fade. And that's part of the equation here is who can we exclude? Because there's a lot of guys in that, you know, upper tier that are attractive. So, oh, yeah. so there's one, there's one to avoid. Um, Sung J M, uh, 7,500 on DraftKings, first timer. He's a guy that just makes cuts all the time. He's great at grinding. But yeah. you know, this will be a little bit more of a challenge for him, you know, never having played this course. Abraham Answer, you know, his popular uh, play recently with his consistent finishes, strong, very strong tee to green, uh, yeah. his first time. Matthew Wolf, a guy who, you know, has just been at the top of the scene with his U.S. Open finish and then his, his play out west. Uh, 8,500. Now he's in a little different category for me because of his driving and his distance. So he's, he's going to be in consideration for me. He'll make some lineups. Um, but you have to hesitate a little bit. Definitely. Cameron champ, uh, 7,100. You know, he's another one that I'm going to consider because of his, his length. And we'll get into the, you know, some more of the numbers on, on driving here in a bit, but Right. Wanted to mention him, Jason Kokrak. There's another guy, first timer. I'm intrigued by him because he won recently, and yeah. you see that a lot where guys win leading up to the Masters, and then they go ahead and win the Masters. And we're not talking about winning back to back weeks. We're just talking about winning in that same season. And uh, you know, he won out in Vegas. So, and he's, he's not a, a young guy like the other ones. He's true. More- more a season he's played in a PGA and a U.S. Open. So I don't even consider – I know it's his first time. I, he's not on my list. I liked him. I like him. I think he's a good, good player right now. But I just – again, you know, even – I don't think the fact that, he, you know, his age helps him so much here that it's as much of a factor with some of the young guys. But still, it's his first time, which I was shocked that it was his first time, to be honest right. with you. Yep. So I agree. That's a good point. And then the last two I want to mention are uh, Lanto Griffin, who's a really nice price here at 6,600 on DraftKings. Yeah. You know, he's had several top 20 finishes recently, yeah. but he's he's a first timer. And then Sebastian Munoz, another guy with multiple top 20s recently, a good price on DraftKings at 6,700. He's been playing well recently, but you have to hesitate a little bit as a first timer. Yeah, yeah. And and I'll tell you, I, I looked at a lot of those guys because they are extremely tempting. And, you know, uh, uh, two or three of them are in the top 25 and odds even toward the bottom of that group. But still, that's pretty respectful, you know, for guys first time out on the course. But uh, uh, but, we you know, we can go into that when we go through the odds. But that is a wonderful point. A couple of things I want to mention also about the course uh, that, you know, I know everybody knows every hole and we watch it, but sometimes you don't put the full thought of it all together here. And it is a par 72. It's about 7,400 yards. But again, it plays even longer than that. Um, and we've had what back to back like 7,000, 7,200, some much uh, shorter courses than, than this one. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the key factor here is the par fours are bare, man. They have 10 par fours, and only one is less than 440 yards. So, I mean, there's no just uh, let's take a, a five iron and then hit another shot up to approach. I mean, you got to hit driver, you have to hit it straight, and then you have to hit, you know, for those guys like a seven iron or with six, you know, six, seven, eight iron in. But there's no, you know, no chipping and charging, you know, and cheating around some of these courses. You can't cut corners. You can't do things that we've seen at some of these other events. So unless your key. name is Bryson. Well, yeah, yeah, he's he's breaking all the records. It's stuff that doesn't make any sense. But uh, 
but you know the, the you know that brings me to the next point that the, the big differentiator here though is you can reach all of the par fives yes it's it's not like there's any of these 650 you know par fives that are protected by all this you can if you hit a monster and then a second monster you can putt for eagle on these par fives and that there's a lot of time. I mean, I, I remember going back for years and years and watching Freddie Couples be in contention every year because Freddie would bang a driver. He hit a monster three wood and he'd be putting for eagle like two or three times every round. You right. know, and those guys, you give them that many looks, they're going to make some of those. So, you know, that's that's a big advantage as well. So, you know, again, it plays all into what we talked about. You, you've got to be long, but you have to be straight. And you can score. Uh, you know the predicted score from what I've been reading, uh, because of it, it's going to play a little longer. People think around maybe 14, 15 under par max for the tournament. You know I could see it even less than that, maybe 12, 13. I think it's going to play a little tougher than you think because the greens, even though it's going to rain a little this week and all that, those greens are still going to be like glass and the and undulation and pin spots you know you know are so dangerous because the water that's in play on those holes uh eight holes have water that streams and all you know how the it works there they're all in play you you could go in all those so it's not like they just have a pretty little pond off to the right that doesn't matter that stream runs right down the middle of the fairway or whatever so uh it creates a lot a lot more difficult uh you know, of a, of a challenge. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd like to um, dive in on Bryson here for a minute, since you've okay. mentioned the, the par fives and how they're reachable. And I do think that he's a, a guy that you really have to decide about. Are you going to pay, pay for that narrative and, and, you know, the hype for everything that's been happening with Bryson and his length and how he's trying to attack Augusta with a different strategy this year and you know some of the information that's come out with you know whispers about his practice rounds there is pretty incredible with what he's trying to do and potentially going to be able to accomplish with some of these par fives he's he's getting there with a driver and either a seven iron and eight iron or even a nine iron on some yeah. of them he's getting to these par fives in two because of his ridiculous length off the tee yeah. you know and if if you think about uh, the second hole. That's the downhill par five. We've seen eagles there a lot. Uh, eight is that that uphill one that goes around the corner. You know, and if he's coming in there with a seven iron, it's it's going to be a likely an eagle putt, probably at worst a tap in birdie. And then fifteen, same thing. The one over the water, uh, he, he just drives it right down to the water and then flips it over with a short iron. I mean, he's going to eat up the par fives. I think there's a chance he could play the par fives in twelve under. And so I, I would say for the for the week, I would say maybe on the other side of it, maybe 17, 18 under, you know, maybe he pushes for a, a record score if if he kind of plays smoothly and, and smart and doesn't make any big numbers. But uh, that I just think that's the big question here is, do you play Bryson? And he's just so expensive that uh, it really um, you know makes the rest of your lineup more challenging if you do. It is. And, you know, I, I understand and agree with you on these, you know, he's going to make a joke out of some of these par fives. But I still say, you know, my concern with him is that accuracy. And yeah, OK, so you have uh, two eagle putts. Maybe you lip them out and you tap in. There's two birdies. But then on the one par five where he sprays the ball, you're staring at double bogey. So there's right. those two strokes right back in the tank. So. You know, I, I'm with you on the fact that, you know, and so is Vegas. He's he's a seven and a half to one favor to win this tournament. He's the he's the chalk. But, I, you know, that's going to be the big decision people make. Are you buying into the hype? Is it true? You know, uh, I, there was one rumor that he uh, was hard short on one of the par fives because he got a big bounce and, and cut some kind of corner or something. So. You know, but those things start getting a little out of control. So uh, I he's the most expensive. Do you think he's going to be the highest owned? Well, that's a good question. Um, 
I don't know. You know, Dustin Johnson being that much cheaper, maybe he get slightly higher ownership. But I do think he's going to be very highly owned. And, you know, it's just it's almost scary to think about what he could do to this course. But I agree. The accuracy is is a major concern because uh, he's really ranked very low on that. Obviously, he he kind of strategizes and and figures, well, if if I, as long as I have a shot at it from the rough, then right. I'll, I'll take it. But, uh, you know, the final thought for me on Bryson is his best finish here is tied for 21st. So he does not have that strong course history no. that a lot of his competitors do. Yeah. And I mean, I we'll talk about it here when we talk about some of our picks and such. But, you know, I think you're going to have just a lot of people. Uh, I'm thinking 30, 35 percent of the field uh, that are going to be in these events, the, the Millie makers and such that are going to put their eggs in the DeChambeau basket. So I think he's going to, you know, his performance could end up being huge. You know, I I don't know what that price without ever having a top 10 there uh, going to be interesting. One last point I'll make about DeChambeau and, then, and, and the course condition. Another thing that came up on a couple things I was reading, and then I also heard in the uh, Charles Howell III interview, which I thought was extremely interesting, he said not having fans there is a big deterrent not because of the cheering and all that, that that's without saying, but he said, you know, when you're looking at some of these holes and you've played there multiple times, they have the crowds aligned in certain areas that helps you see and shape your shot. So not having anybody out there makes a whole different look distance wise and where you're trying to position the ball. And he thinks that's going to make a big difference for some of the players you know, it, it it is somewhat of an equalizer so to take it back to what you said before. The young guys that have never played there before, they've never had seen that. Right. So for them, this is going to be all they know. But, for, you know, and, and you can let's let's bring those guys up right now, because to me, if you have an advantage with a guy, a popular guy right now that people are talking about for some reason is Lee Westwood. He's playing well. He's been there 8 million times. I get it. I get it. The Louise Oosthuizen's, your favorite pe- player, Casey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but all those guys that have been there a million times. Well, that's where he was saying, and he was speaking for himself, how, because he's played it 12 times with fans there. It's going to be a little bit of a disadvantage because they're not going to have be able to see that and shape it the way that they always envision it. And he said that's such an important part for PGA guys to envision. In fact, one of the guys closes his eyes. Is it Jason Day, I think, before he hits the ball, where he closes it and envisions it? And I think, you know, that may take a little bit away. If you are going to want to throw maybe a last guy in, you know, the Oosthuizen's Casey's, like I said, and, some of the guys that have been there, Molinari's and, you know, the guys that are, are up there in age but have the course knowledge because, you know, we all know Tiger won there, course knowledge. We know what Jack won there. I'll never forget that. I think it was, what, 79 or 86. It was 86. 86. And stuff like that, you just, you know, so there is some advantageous piece to that. But uh, just wanted to bring that up. If you're on the verge of do you want a younger guy or an older guy, Remember what Hal said. It, it's going to not only is it November, so it's going to play a little different. They've overseeded the fairways, and it, they haven't totally taken yet with the new seed. Whereas in April, they're in complete bloom. So there's a lot of different things that, for me, e- equalizes the field. And there are a few lineups since, believe it or not, I'm going to take uh, two or three bullets uh, in the Millie Maker. So all of right. people on Coach Talk. Do I always say, don't play all these lotto tickets, play the cash games. I'm so fired up at the Masters, I'm going to allow, allow myself to play a few bullets. But in doing that, I'm, I'm not afraid to put a wolf or a coke rack or these couple of these guys in for all of those per- reasons I just said. I think that it helps even that and take a little bit away from uh, the first time on the course. Yeah, let me transition with that point. It's a good segue because remember how – before Houston, we talked about Scotty Scheffler and that interview he had where he said he thinks it will be an advantage for him 
potentially that he hasn't played it, but it's in November right. and without fans. So it's it's everybody's a lot more on a even a level playing field because right. of the fact that it's in November without fans. And and for that reason, for some of these first timers, if they're excellent at at driving the ball, which is really important here at Augusta, then I'm going to consider them for my lineup. So I looked at total driving, which combines distance off the tee and accuracy. Okay. And so far in the in the brief 2021 season, Scotty Scheffler is number two in that stat on the PGA Tour. Uh, so he gets uh, some consideration for me. And then Jason Kokrak is fifth in that stat. And yeah. obviously his win played a big part in that. But the big thing with him is that he putted so well in Vegas. And those are fast, bent grass greens, just like here at Augusta. So a guy who's that good at driving it and he's putting it well now at only 7,000 on DraftKings. I like him as a, as an option. And then, uh, Cameron champ, again, I mentioned him earlier because, uh, because he is in the pool for me. He's 16th in that stat. He's really cheap. And one little fun fact about him is he is now working with Justin Rose's old caddy. Hmm. Uh, so although it's, Champ's first time in competition at the Masters. He has a caddy who's been there quite a bit. That's a good point. Um, one stat I looked at, which is similar to yours, it's it's built on uh, pretty, com- you know, uh, confusing criteria. But it takes the fours, par fours, and par fives into consideration, and basically combines a group of statistics that measure ultimately length plus accuracy. Which again, we've talked about at nauseum here of that going to be a huge part of what happens. And I, I, here's six names I want to throw at you because they're going to scatter around, you know, making some of my lineups uh, just based on these were six of the top, I think 14, but they just stuck out to me. And it was Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, Hideki, Hideki Matsuyama, um, Max Homa, which one of my long shot guys, I always play again, Scotty Scheffler. He's on all those lists. And then Mr. Burns, who we've played and is, has produced and played better, another uh, secret squirrel kind of guy uh, that I just want to throw out there. So uh, just a few names. You know, again, it's going to be a combination. There's no magic bullet stats for this. You know, it's the Masters. you got to put every piece of your game together. Uh, one thing I, that of note that I thought was really bizarre is, you know, they utilized – the criteria to qualify for this event for when it was going to be played in April. And do you know that uh, Berger and Hovland, two of our top guys, didn't qualify? They're not going to be in this event. So I thought that was pretty bizarre that, that they didn't make it. But uh, Yeah, that's a shame for guys that are ranked that high. But uh, yeah. I imagine they'll be at the next one in the spring. But out of that group that you just uh, mentioned, I, I want to follow up on three of them. Okay. DJ, DJ, uh, Hideki, and um, the the other the other big bomber, Kepka. Um, yeah, Kepka. So those three guys are in play for me, and they're making everything so much more difficult because of how well they played in Houston. Because DJ and Kepka specifically were huge question marks. Yeah. DJ hadn't played since the U.S. Open because of COVID. And he started out really poorly in Houston, but then the way he played over the weekend, it's like, okay, yeah, he's there's the best player in the world again. He's right back in in the groove, and he's yeah. had four straight top tens at the Masters. Yeah, he's ridiculous. Do you know? Did you watch him a lot this this past weekend? I didn't get to see much of him. I, I watched him a ton, and I'll tell you what, he burned more corners of uh, putting, he- missing putts, like lipping them out. Burn in the corner, burn in the corner. He'd have won that tournament by five, six shots. So, you know me, I'm not a DJ guy. I don't trust him. But, damn, I'll tell you, when he's playing that kind of golf, he is tough to beat. Yeah, and before I forget, I did see Jordan Spieth burn the edges a couple times. And, he, you know, he barely missed the cut. And so people are going to look at that and say, okay, he missed the cut. He's still playing poorly. But he easily could have made the, made, made the cut, and we know – how he can turn it on at, at the Masters. So there's a, a real wild card for me that I, I don't want to play, but 
you know, you get a little I'm, bit. I'm the biggest Jordan Spieth fan. I tell, I, you know, I mentioned every yeah. week. He lives 15 minutes here from here. Tremendous guy, but the dude just his brain is just blown. I, I don't yeah. see him competing. But yeah, I think I it's unlikely as well. I, 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 I hope it's wrong. unlikely as well. But yeah. um, with Kepka and Hideki, Kepka again, you know, he's been hurt. Has he had that stretch there where he was was not playing well at all because of the injury? But yeah. the way he finished on the weekend, 65-65. You look good. Oh, man. I mean, he's really primed here. He's peaking, you know, at the right time. So, you know, would it surprise anybody if he won by a couple shots? No, not at all, if he's healthy. so. Plus, I think he's got extra motivation because not one person in the world is talking about him in this event, but every single person is talking about his – sort of arch nemesis right now, DeChambeau. Those two right. guys have, you know, exchanged a few barbs. So I think he's got extra motivation just to to try to beat Bryson, to be honest with you. But yeah, a lot I don't of know. Guys Kepka's too. an odd cookie. You just don't know all the time with him either. Yes, exactly. And then Hideki, yeah. same thing. Uh, great tee to green and peaking at the right time. He's made seven of eight cuts uh, with two top tens at the Masters. And on DraftKings, he's only 8,700. So, you know, there's a lot of guys for me in the high 8, low 9K range that I think they have a chance to win. And I, I want to try to fit as many of them into my lineup as I can. I think Hideki Hideki's going to be the sweetheart for DFS players. I think he'll be the third highest owned behind DeChambeau and DJ. I think that he's... I think a lot of people watched how hot he was. And I'll tell you what, when he starts making putts, forget it. Because exactly. nobody's a better ball striker on the tour than him. So, uh, you know, if he's making putts, he's going to be right in there. And like you said, the price is right. You can fit him as a second-tier guy, and it really helps when – and, you know, it's so tempting. And and I my original lineup here that I made, I've got him in there because – you know, when you can put your second tier guy in and he's got a hell of a shot to win the tournament, you know, that's all you can ask for for your second tier guy. So, you know, this is the stage of the uh, time where we have to go and look at the odds and see if you can continue your your uh, win streak to two okay. after we busted you finally for a couple of weeks there. But so I've just clicked on to renew because it, it keeps changing because there's a a ton of money being, being bet on this Masters. I mean, you could, looking at the Houston Open odds, they moved like uh, about as fast as they counted the votes for the election. <laughs> right. But now, you know, it just changed. And since we've been on, on the air here, uh, Dustin Johnson was 9-1 to one and dropped to 7.5-1. to one. So on BetUS, for him to move a point and a half, somebody put a uh, just boatload on DJ. But... Um, as we're going to jump into the betus.com.pa, I'm going to call those up and let's listen to our golden voice to give you a little bit of preview of the great things you can get when you join uh, the betus.com.pa uh, site. Wake up, sports bettors. Sports are in high gear at BetUS.com, so put down the beer and make every sporting event more exciting by putting stakes on the line at BetUS. Earn bragging rights over your friends as you rake in the cash from each week's betting action. But don't settle for any other book. Choose America's favorite sports book with over 25 trusted years in the industry, BetUS. You need a sports book with integrity and longevity, but more importantly, you need a sports book that pays. BetUS has your game with action on football, baseball, basketball, MMA, golf, horse racing, and even esports. No other sportsbook welcomes newcomers like BetUS with their jaw-dropping sign-up bonuses. Sign up now with promo code COACHTALK for 125% sign-up bonus up to two grand. The best in the biz. Now you have the best book in the business with the best DFS provider in the business, Coach Talk. Create your account to make point spread bets, futures bets, prop bets, entertainment bets, live bets, and more. No other sports book is as committed to their members as BetUS. Sign up now and get in on the winning side of the ball. All right. And definitely a great time to join in. I mean, you know, uh, we want to, would love to have you here at DFS Coach Talk. Uh, we haven't even talked about that. We've been so excited about the golf. <laughs> but what a great time to join uh, at DFSCoachTalk.com. 
and also a great time uh, at betus.com.pa. If you're looking to play DFS, uh, we're going to you know, be right alongside you to, to bring you bring you home some winners. And then if you're looking for some individual wagers or parlays, certainly, you know, football, everybody loves to, to knock a couple parlays out. Uh, they are fantastic. We do have a fantastic special speaking of the magic word fantastic today. Uh, do you want to share that winner special with everybody a little bit? Oh, yeah. Well, that's a membership option. It saves you on the monthly price. It gives you full access to all of our sports and lineups through the Super Bowl and for another week thereafter. So you get the rest of the football season, and we give out lineups for all the slates. Sunday main slate, Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night. Uh, had a lot of success this year, a lot of fun. We give out full lineups on FanDuel, the coach's clipboard on DraftKings. And then when basketball starts in December, you'll get all those lineups. And, of course, you get our golf lineups every week. So just go to DFSCoachTalk.com, and you can pick up that winter special. We'd love to have you. Tremendous uh, members. Everybody's enjoying it. And, you know, we dive very, very deep on the – we cover four sports. I feel better than anybody. We don't scatter shot and cover, you know, uh, all these uh, different things that everybody covers – uh, yeah, alpine pong. skiing, ping pong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're we're focused on bat, NBA, NFL, MLB, and PGA, and we're going to give you the best of the best with all of that. So come and join us. We'd love to have you. All right, top twenty score. Uh, top twenty. Here they are. Because then I'm going to give them to you. Because okay. I'm going to ask you to give me three of the next five. All right. 21 through Oof. 25. I'm not messing around this week. DeChambeau, seven and a half to one. John Rahm, who we haven't mentioned again, he always goes under the radar. He's nine to one. DJ, who's jumped to seven and a half to one, co favorite. Then you got JT, 11 to one, with McElroy, another name we didn't mention yet. Certainly could win it. A uh, guy that I love too, Xander Shoffley, 13 to one. Your man Brooks Kepka's 13 to 1, so the people do believe he's going to be there. Guy that I play all the time could win this for fun. Patrick Cantley at 23 to 1. Love that play. Patrick Reed, who's won here before at 24. Bubba Watson always crushes it at, at the Masters. He's 26 to 1. Uh, Tyrrell Hatton, who's been all over everybody's board, 26 to 1. Uh, Webb Simpson. Another guy that when he's on, he's right there, 28 to 1. Morikawa is 30 to 1. Uh, here's a guy that, that's taken some play. And, you know, again, he's not the finisher on Sunday, but as far as being in the top 10 or even top 5 here, Tony Finau is a nice bet. He's jumped from 32 to 1 down to 26 to 1. So he's a terrific play. Tiger Woods. I don't know how you can play Tiger, but if you, I don't, I mean, he's 32 to one, uh, but it's Tiger. So I guess anything can happen with Tiger. Jason Day, who's found his game recently, except for Sunday when I need him to play well, Jason, 32 to one. Uh, And then here's Hideki Matsuyama. And this, let me tell you this. He was 35 to one yesterday. He has moved now to 23 to one. So. He has gotten a boatload of cash put on him. And then Matthew Wolf, which I thought was shocking, 35 to 1. And Tommy Fleetwood at 40 to 1. So that's the list, the top 20 uh, at the betus.com.pa. So now you've got five guys. You need three of them. You can miss three and get back on your horse here. So what do you got? Oh, boy. So for the next five guys... Yep. How about Ricky Fowler? He did not make it. He He's is twenty seventh. Huh? Twenty seventh. Okay. Sixty to one. Okay. He's really fallen off the face of the earth. All right. How about one of the young bombers here? We were talking about Scotty Scheffler. He is twenty fourth at six sixty to one as well. So twenty so fourth. I'm sorry, twenty sixth. Twenty sixth. Where's the respect for the for the young guy? Fowl, he's one spot below Fowler. Two two Uh-oh. by by an inch. Well, actually, Scheffler's 
tied with uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick. So there, I gave you another name. They're right below. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's good to do a I, shout out. Do I dare go with our guy Paul Casey? I mean, give him a give him a top twenty five for the odds, please. He's twenty. He's twenty fifth. Yes, Paul you, Casey won something for I us. I picked this <laughs> spot because I never thought you would take Casey. <laughs> So you Excellent. got one fifty-five to one. All right. Well, how about the guy who's you know been there near the top many times, Jordan Spieth? He is. He is. He is the next guy on the list, just under Fleetwood. Uh, so you know he's a past champion. So there you go. You got three left. One miss. One make. It all, all right. comes down to this. Oh, well, sudden death. How about Louis Oosthuizen? You got it, man. Yes. He's one oh, man, spot Louis. ahead of Casey. I tried to go with the tough ones. Spieth, Scott, Rose, Oosthuizen, and Casey. How about that for five guys? They've all been right there probably 15 times each. And uh, But you got it. So well done, man. Very well done. So there, there were a couple interesting ones I, I wanted to share. I thought a couple things that stood out to me I, I, I got to go through because they – they don't horse around here. They they give you odds on everybody. Would you believe you could bet on VJ Singh to win this? <laughs> Jeez. He's he's 800 to 1. But uh here's a couple of names cuz you know defending champs uh not defending champs from 40 years ago, they have the right to play here if they want and some of them do. So you've got some of these old timers uh that are in there. Even Bernard Longer, man. I'll tell you what I remember as a kid watching, and any time it was a Master Sunday, Bernard Longer was right there. That dude was is, absolutely awesome. This is 37th awesome. Masters this week. That's insane. Guy he's is so like, damn good. He plays like he's 37 still. Yeah. He makes the cut here every year. It's incredible. Incredible. Freddie Couples. Yeah. He's in there, my man Freddie. Uh, but, you know, there were some long bombs, I thought. You know, have been playing decent golf. I mean, you got a Lucas Glover, 220 to 1. A Charles Schwartz, Schwartzel, 220 to 1. Um, I thought that was sort of wild. Um, you know, guys like uh, Kevin Na, he's respected 140 to 1. Henrik Stenson, 180 to 1. Lanto Griffin, that's played great, he's 140 to 1. So, you know, Danny Willett's a champion here. He's 160 to 1. So you got some lots of bombs in there, uh, you know, and it I'll tell you, though, when you're building out your DFS lineups, it's always good to take a look at these odds, because if you're on the fence with the guy you want to throw in there and then you pop on here and it shows that he's 600 to one, you know, you got to relook at it a little bit. But, uh, you know, I you know, my long shot guy, Max Homa, that I like to play a lot, you know, he's 350 to one, though. That's a yep. hard pill to swallow. No. So, you know, how I know Vegas knows their stuff, so that does give you a little scare. Now, I'll tell you, here's some guys, just a handful, that you'll be interested in. Only 900 to 1, or 90 to 1, I'm sorry, 90 to 1, Cameron Champ and Cameron Smith, Abraham Answer, Coke Rack's only 80 to 1, Shane Lowry, Guy that nobody talks about, six, 65 to 1. Uh, Mickelson's only 70 to 1. And would you believe Scotty Scheffler's 65 to 1? He's almost the same price as Phil Mickelson. Yeah. So that's that makes me a little nervous about Scheffler. Uh, and then, again, you've got the, you know, the group that starts coming up in there in that top 25. But just some good things to share. Uh, you know, it looks like from the betting side, you know, the majority of the money is with DJ and DeChambeau, but there is good money on Rom, JT, McElroy, Shoffley, and Kepka. Those are those that group is 13 to 1 and under. And then you got a big jump to 23 to 1 in Cantley and Reed and Watson. So, you know, <clears throat> here's my question I'll leave you with on the odds. Are you going to build more of a medium build? We have had a lot of success doing that. Or does one of DeChambeau, Rom, Johnson, Thomas, McElroy, Shoffley, Kepka make your lineup and then you build from there? Or do you take two of the studs and then try to dumpster dive with a couple of bombs on the other side? What's the strategy this week to win all the money? 
The strategy this week for me is probably to just take one of those guys at most. Okay. And I'll, I'll have uh, a, a handful of lineups with one of them, but I'm also going to have a number of lineups without any of them because I do really like Patrick Cantlay at 9,600. If I had to pick one guy to win it outside of that top group you're talking about, like top six or seven in terms of pricing, it's Cantlay. He won uh, at the Zozo. And, you know, his, the way, just his, he did a long interview after that win on the Golf Channel. And yeah. he just seemed so laser focused on getting ready to win at the Masters and yeah. being comfortable with the idea. He contended here last year. Uh, I just, I, I like him a lot, and he's so much cheaper. So he's got that killer instinct too, man. I mean, sort of the opposite of the Finau. I mean, he zones in. Not to, it sounds like I'm always uh, ki- killing Finau. I actually like Tony Finau this week. Have you seen his finishes here at the Masters? What two straight top tens? Two for I, two on top tens. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, I mean, you know, so. Does it does it hurt to have the guy that finishes eighth? No, I'll take all those DFS points. Exactly. You know, do I think he has the the nuts to finish it and win it? Not really at this point, and not for his first you know big win. But uh, I'll tell you what: if you're looking for one of the more steadier players in the entire field, I'm talking about anybody in the field. Uh, I think right now he's more steady, and you're going to think I'm crazy than DeChambeau, Rom, Johnson. McElroy. I know that sounds nuts. Those guys can win this by four or five shots. But as far as just consistently solid ball striker, great putter, very calm player, I think Tony Finau is one of the top three in the game. I just have been a huge de- you know, deterrent because it comes to Sunday. I just I don't feel like he has a chance. But he's going to make my lineup this week. That's, nice. that's my big shocker. I, I like think it. Tony Finau, what he's shown he can do here, the way the course sets up, you know, I just, I think there's less pressure when there's no fans. That might help him a little bit. Uh, you know, I just, I think he's a top 10 guy. You know, our, uh, speaking our, uh, you know, for, for those guys that like to bet, uh, you know, 10 top 20 finishes, uh, I wouldn't play him as a top, you know, to win it or top three, but I would sure as hell play him as a top 10 or 20 in a heartbeat. I think that's a great bet. Yeah, I like that play. And, you know, the great thing for Tony is he doesn't have to do the par three contest this year and (laughs) break his ankle running down the fairway. So, you know, if he can come in here healthy, uh, watch out. I mean, he finishes top 10 with a nearly broken ankle, dislocated ankle. So that was um, the strangest thing I've ever seen. That was crazy. That was crazy. So, yeah. You know, he played that tournament. Yeah. Yeah, that's what yep. was shocking. I mean, his if you if you ever have a chance to see that it was a par three turn. Was it last year or two years ago? He, he two made, years ago. He he made a hole in one. Yeah, and, on the par three, and so he started running down the hill to celebrate, and his ankle popped completely out of place. And I thought, oh my god, he's done. But yeah. he played the weekend, Amazing. so and he did well. So there you go. So I, I like you know the th- the other thing I like about him is he's not it's not one of those tournaments without a bunch of other studs and he's like second or third highest priced you yeah. know we're talking about a guy who's much lower on the board who could easily finish top 10 top five so i like the value there here's the the mid-tier value guy that i like the most and okay. if, if you look at DraftKings, you know you kind of just go back to basics before you out your lineup you you see that you have an average of for each player eight thousand three hundred and thirty three because you have six players to to make fifty thousand if so, you think of that as an average player, and then you look at Jason Day. He's 8,400 this week. And to me, he's not an average player on this no. course. No. He's had three top fives at the Masters and finished tied for seventh last week. So you combine a guy with that much history, good recent form. I, I just love his price tag this week. Yeah, I think he's a little too cheap. I'm just a little sour on how he played on Sunday. He was plus four when everybody else was minus four. So I'm not sure what happened there, but you're right. When he's on, he's definitely playing better. And his big issue is, you know, two tournaments ago though, he had a lead because of a neck and back issue. So you got to just watch. There's a little risk there, but he could be a great steal for you. Um, You know, let's, as we're wrapping up here, uh, let's give, 
well, you sort of already gave yours one stud, but I'd like to give one stud and one uh, value play each. Uh, just sort of, you know, give, because we've spread out a lot of information here, a lot for people to digest and build some lineups. Talking this, you know, very aggressively the next couple of days in our Discord. So join us at DFSCoachTalk.com. Come in, even if it's for a week membership, just get in there, see what we've got, listen to our, our, uh, our folks in there. We've got a lot of experts, uh, not just our pros, but some of our great members in there that share some great information. So definitely join us there. You can also catch us on Twitter. We're at DFS Coach Talk. I'm at Joe Sarvati, J-O-E-S-A-R-V-A-D-I. Andrew is at Language Olympic. Shane is at D-E-T Sports Shane. Also, we're on Instagram, DFS underscore Coach Talk. Obviously, if you're watching this right now on YouTube, please take a second. This is huge. Subscribe. Hit the little alarm button. Give us a thumbs up. Those three things, click, click, click on your way out today after the end of the show here. Do that. We really appreciate it. When you uh, hit that little alarm button and subscribe, you'll get an alert every time one of our podcasts go up. And we do a weekly PGA, multiple uh, football, including by position, a podcast going up. Before you know it, we'll be back into basketball. We're doing uh, in uh, nine days is the NBA draft. We're going to do a pre-draft podcast and a post-draft. That's when uh, the, uh, for NBA, I always have to talk NBA because that's my lifeblood. I love it. Uh, you know, they'll be st starting and reporting to camp December 1st. Today's November 9th. So we're going to have preseason, some preseason play and games starting right away. And, and we'll be, as always, seven days a week uh, in there with uh, NBA pod. So that's right around the corner. Great time to join. All right. Your favorite chalk guy or expensive guy, I'm sorry, not chalk, two different things. Your favorite expensive guy, and we've had multiple suggestions for your value play. Yes. Everything from Hanson's hookers because golf, you know, you hook the ball. So right. we've, we've eliminated that one, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So that was that was uh, proposed by a woman actually on YouTube too. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! And then, so what did we come up with, Andrews? Well, what, what was the winner? Roush suggested Hanson's Hail Marys. That's my favorite okay. name Mary's so far. Okay. The That's problem fine. is the only the only problem with that name is Hail Marys makes it sound like it's a complete long shot. That's not going to hit very often. And hey, you're Doug Flutie of golf. Well, if it's it's sure Doug Flutie every pass because <laughs> two weeks ago we gave out eight guys under eight K on DraftKings. They all made the cut. I know. So you know these are hail marys in terms of price, but I mean we grind really hard to try to pick out these cheaper players who are going to make the cut. Hey, how that's, about that's the I've key. got I've got to give myself a shout out. I normally don't do that, but Andrew Young uh, Long was my secret squirrel yes. long shot. I gave him out on the show, gave him out in, in our Discord. The dude was in the top five for a bunch of the weekend, and he's had money. a top 20 finish. You know, that's the kind of guys that make the difference. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have cashed. So, uh, I, you know, Andrew Long was a giant secret squirrel. So, uh, all right, so what do you, So we're going with Andrew or, or uh, Hanson's Hail Marys for now. Okay, all right. We're, that's under review, so all right. go ahead. So I'm just I'll, I'll go with one here, and it's a guy you actually mentioned in passing earlier, Cameron Smith. Okay, he has a uh, top five finish at the Masters, and okay. his last last two tournaments, eleventh and tied for fourth. And you just combine that with his price on DraftKings, only seventy three hundred. And you know the way my build is going, you need a guy in that price range that you feel really confident about to make the cut and, yeah. and hopefully go top twenty. So he's that guy for me this week. And and your chalk play again was? Uh, I'm going with Cantlay at 9,600 of, of, you know, not looking at the top five guys, but I like Cantlay this week. Very good. Um, for me, my, my chalk guy, and we haven't hardly talked about him, so it'll be sort of a surprise to you, but his consistency, his finishes here, and his play, Xander Shoffley. I love Xander Shoffley. He's my favorite player right now. He's 9,800. So 
you know, it's not like you're killing yourself with 11-2 Shambo or 10-7 Thomas or even a 10-5 Rom. So 9-8 to me, when I saw him under 10 with his game, I had to go there. And uh, I, I've alluded to my long shot here, first time on the course, but a veteran player that's really prime playing right now. He's only 7,000. I'm going with Mr. Kokrak. He's he's playing as good as anybody, and I just want him to be strong enough to uh, make the cut. He's got four top tens, uh, you know, playing with some confidence. So that's my that's my secret squirrel, and he's got a little gray hair for the secret squirrel, but big tall with- squirrel. He can yeah he can he can blast it out there. Good pick. It was funny because I had uh, Sepp Straka who played great for me this weekend. If, I don't know if you watched it on Saturday, but it's hilarious. Sepp Straka and Jason Kokrak are built a little bit like me. A little bulky, <laughs> little, you know, little extra cushion. And uh, they both had a red shirt on. So every and and white and beige pants. Every time they showed them, it was like looking at the same guy. They were like 6'3, 240, and a little uh, little, you know, extra muscle for the hustle. But uh, I couldn't tell the difference between them. But you, you, they're, not, they're hard to miss out there, especially when you got all those. I still don't understand. Someday you got to explain this to me. I know we got to wrap it up because you have football coming up and everything. But how do these little guys like Justin Thomas? He's he, I was that size in, in middle school. How the hell does he hit the ball like that? It's incredible. It's like Mookie I, I, Bet. It's like Mookie Betts in baseball. Yeah. So f- almost frail looking compared to some of the yeah. top athletes. But it's all about that swing speed. It's you know, crazy, and, and the the technique, and man, do they have it mastered? It's 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 no fun pun to intended. Watch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's it. We we really in, in you know enjoyed this one. I know we went way longer, but it's the Masters. We had a lot to share. I hope this gives you a lot of input and in what as you're building. Um, and uh, you know, we'd love to hear from you. Hit us up on Twitter. You know, again at Joe Servati and at Language Olympic. You know, you can certainly respond here to YouTube. We always reply or, you know, give some type of, uh, you know, response there to, to communicate. And we'd love to have you at the EFS Coach Talk. So uh, any final words? Enjoy it. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a fun one. So, again, thank you for tuning in. Um, we certainly will will be back again next week. But this is going to be a fun week of golf. So enjoy it. Have fun. Be safe out there. And uh, we want to thank uh, certainly our presenting sponsor, sponsor, betus.com.pa. So with that, we will close and we'll look to crush it again next week on DFS. Bye.